Hey team, Chef Eric here, hope you're well. Uh, one of my favorite accessories from Kamada Joe is the Kamada Joe Jotisserie, all right? Uh, this is a lot of fun to hook up on today, your Big Joe 3. I wanna show you some of the tools that come with the Jotisserie that you'll use and some of the things you take off of your standard setup. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, but before we do, Oh, the recipe we're gonna do. It's a bit of a food stunt, but also one of my favorite Argentinian dishes, the matambre, all right? Coming from two words, two Spanish words, matar, to kill, and hambre, hunger. So this is the hunger killer. Let's get it. All right, let's go over what comes with the jotisserie. You get this really well-crafted ring that's gonna sit directly on the gasket material, and that lid shuts down. It's kind of a wedge shape. Uh, you've also got these two forks or tines, the actual spit where the uh, forks latch into, and then you've got the motor itself which hooks onto the, uh, to the left hand side. So let's go ahead and alter our Big Joe 3 right now to set it up uh, to accept the jotisserie, which means we're going to have to take out our flexible cooking rack or divide and conquer system as well as that wing on the left. Where we remove that left side shelf, we're just going to put our motor right on the side. Now that we've successfully set up our jotisserie, we're going to go ahead and build our fire. One thing to take into consideration when using the jotisserie is that you do lose a little bit of control of airflow because you've got this wedge in there. You're not going to be able to use this gasket so that it's airtight. Um, so I do start with a little bit less charcoal and I want to be able to see some of these tines in the, in the grill basket down there, in the fire basket. Pile up some of these larger pieces of charcoal around the fire starter just to promote great airflow and remember heat rises so we're gonna, gonna kick some of these pieces on top so we can get to temperature quickly that's fun charcoal jenga oh i like what we're seeing all right we've got a nice stack of charcoal there it's climbing vertically the draft doors open great airflow in a couple minutes we'll shut that dome and let the dome start sucking up some of that heat uh, remember at that point we'll have the control tower fully open. We're going to max out this small amount of fire that we have so that when we're cooking the matambre, really we're using the residual heat from the ceramic and a little bit from the fire. Remember we didn't use a lot of charcoal. Uh, this is by design. So while we're waiting for the grill to heat up, let's talk about the vegetables or the stuffing for the matambre. We've got a little poblano, red bell pepper, cilantro, onion, carrot, serrano pepper, we're gonna throw some hard boiled eggs in there, a little garlic, uh, and some fun scorpion steak seasoning. So let's go ahead and chop this stuff up and then we'll begin to work on the actual three bone ribeye. Here we go. All right, vegetables are prepped, eggs are done. Uh, grill is coming to temperature beautifully. Now it is time to start fabrication on this awesome, awesome cut of beef. All right, look at this big old piece of meat. Just for giggles, I went ahead into the garage and grabbed a tape measure. So from here to here, I'm gonna do it this way. That is almost a 10 inch bone there. We're using a Big Joe 3 today. Uh, we're gonna see if a 10 inch bone French ribeye uh, will actually fit and spin fully on the jotisserie. So from tip, to spinalis, we're looking at 19, see if you can see that, I'm sure it's a little backwards, 19 inches, uh, and it's gonna be a little bit bigger once we've uh, kind of flayed this out. So let me back you up just a little bit, and let's, let's get to fabricate, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and score the outside of this fat cap while I've got it connected. I get a lot of questions about knives. This is a KAI Pro uh, 11 and a half inch slicer. Uh, you know, that's a shun company. And I really like this for fabricating large pieces of meat, cutting briskets, and even cutting certain types of fruit. Uh, so I like a cross hatch here. 
that's gonna just give us uh, the ability to get a little more smoke to penetrate that fat cap as well as get our seasoning in there. Now we're gonna stand our, stand our bones up and trace straight down, not cutting all the way through. Make sure you can see that. And now that I'm here, I'm gonna turn the knife flat and start to carve in just, just a touch, keeping the blade flat to the table. giving us access. And now we're gonna go again right here, okay? Now we're gonna cut into that eye piece right there. See that beautiful muscle group? We're just gonna aim right for the middle of it. Oh, this is so cool. And our knife just flat. Holy bajoli, this is incredible. And now I'm gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna score the inside. Creating nooks and crannies for flavor to build. Mm -mm -mm. We'll go ahead and pound it out use my grandmother's rolling pin here. You know it's serious when you're, you're breaking out your grandmother's rolling pin. Just a little physical tenderization going on here. You can even take out some of this globular fat if you want to. That's that big eye piece uh, in, in the ribeye that uh, you know, you either absolutely love or you, you avoid, so your call. And then Spinalis kind of running the entire center gambit here. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. I mean, that is a, that is, I feel like I'm holding a rattlesnake or something. This is so cool. All right, now we're all fabricated. Let's get a little, just a little seasoning. We're gonna use a Lane's barbecue combo on that. Let's get just a little bit of oil olive oil there and just gently coat the interior of the meat. A little fresh chopped garlic. Try to get in all those score marks that we created and let that start going to town. Serrano, if you don't like too much heat you can switch to a different pepper or, or even just black pepper chopped cilantro and now let's start layering it out we're gonna go red bell pepper green uh, poblanos maybe then the onions maybe then the carrots and we'll we'll start staggering our uh, our beautiful hard-boiled eggs last but not least a little bit of our red pepper flakes that is three feet of absolute deliciousness right there yeah, so I've done a lot of things, a lot of crazy things, but this is ridiculous. Um, I'm freaking starving. We're winning already. We haven't even put the meat to the flame yet. I'm super excited. Uh, I've got some butcher twine, and we've got it all splayed out here. Now we're going to kind of, like a, we're rolling sushi, we're going to roll this first part of it, crimp it just a little bit, and gently roll as not to smush our hard-boiled eggs. And, uh, and then we're gonna trust this. So let's see how we do. And I'll just, I'll just tie two pieces on right now. You know, this is kind of a, a first. I don't know anybody's ever done this with a bone-in ribeye. So we've got our two strings hanging out up top. We've got our two strings hanging down below. Give one more gentle pull. Not pulling too tightly, but making sure we're snug. And we'll go again. This piece here. Oh 
All right, now that we've got a good truss there, let's go right here. Wrap around once, wrap around twice. Mega nice. Look at that. Now I wanna do one more supportive truss north to south here one more and just want to make sure you can see this i'm going to take 50 percent of the rope and then i'm going to come around and just loop around that okay and this is this is great support here and then every rope i come across every string rather that i come across i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to come under Pull it taut, but not too taut, and then around. And then I can use the leverage of this bone here, the structure to kind of come around and come down. And we're gonna loop here. Continuing on our path to the next rope. Here and here. And then we should meet up with the other half of our string. And this baby is trussed. Can you imagine coming to a butcher shop and this thing is just sitting in there looking all sexy and delicious. Oh my gosh. I think I, you know, there's so much fat content in this. We cut some of it out, but I almost want to make some kind of a acidic sauce to put over the top of this. I'm thinking something like a chimichurri might be nice. So maybe we do that while it's uh, while it's spinning. And the last, that's what you want to hear. That last knot is done. Let's get the exterior of this seasoned up with some of that scorpion rub. And this is Christmas come early. Now remember those forks or tines are gonna play an important role in holding this thing together. So it's really cool. Uh, that they both have four individual pieces. So that will be eight other things other than the trussing uh, that are going to help us hold this together as it's flipping around. Uh, again, I've been measuring it, but I have no idea if this is going to be able to make a full rotation. I don't know if it doesn't. I don't know what we're going to do. Bandsaw, I have no idea. Uh, but we are cooking this baby on a jotisserie today. So this is just a this is just a monster, you know. Bring you guys over here with me. When I say we want to be 350, not bad. Good. I'm gonna bank coals to the side so those bones don't hit. Trying to get every little inch we can and show you what we've got. It's gonna be a close one, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's flip the switch. Let's see if it fits. Made a minor two inch adjustment on those bones. Here we go. Let's see how we did. Go baby, go. Woo! We are in business. In serious business at that. Go, 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 go. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is happening. All right, now we're gonna close that lid and just let magic happen for a little bit. Don't ever overthink chimichurri, okay? Uh, oil, red wine vinegar, fresh garlic, a little bit of salt, uh, serranos or jalapenos, lime juice, and then I, I pick some uh, some cilantro and uh, I happen to have cilantro and pick some parsley. Okay, so no big deal. I got the blender out. Chimichurri in the books. Look at that basty bark. All that marrow has dripped from the top of the bones and just dripped down. That's one of the benefits of these jotisseries. And right there too, that's a little secret spot. And it just drips on that. That's the spinalis right there. That's the deckle, the ribeye cap that everybody always raves about. Let's, uh, it's been one hour. Let's go ahead and take an internal temperature. We're gonna push the pause button right there. 
float the thermometer, kind of push it up and down, see where you're at. Uh-huh, true temperature, 105. You can gun for about an hour and a half at 350 degrees, and then probably 20 minutes of rest time. So that's almost a two hour cook, let's call it. Almost there, team. All right, team, it's been about an hour and 15 minutes. And look at that park. So I'm gonna push the pause button here. We've hit that 120 degree internal temperature. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. I've done a lot of fun cooks on the Jotisserie, um, but none as fun as this, I don't think. So I'm gonna let this rest. Before I even take the spit out of it, I'm gonna let it rest for at least 15 minutes, slide this out. We're gonna stand it up and slice into it, put a little chimichurri, and we're donezo. Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. So let's, oh, let's just take this one. All the, all the beautiful parts that we put in there together, the chimichurri sauce, uh, even doneness all around. Let's slice into it. The matambre. All right, take my word for it. This is one of the most unique and fun cuts I've done in a long time, fun cooks I've done rather in a long time. The jotisserie plays such a unique role, whether you're jotissering chickens, I mean, you can keep it very simple. This is a little bit of an elevated cook, but really the things that we did today were very simple uh, techniques. Don't worry about knife cuts, just get, get the stuff in there, roll it out, roll it back in. If you need any help, please reach out to me and I'm, I'm happy to help you with uh, trusting and that sort of thing virtually. So um, team, thank you so much for hanging out. This is uh, my favorite Argentinian dish, the matambre on the jotisserie. Again, thanks for your patience. Thanks for hanging out. Don't forget to click those notification buttons. Do the thumbs up for me, please, because this was, this was a lot of fun for me. And, uh, and leave a notification, leave a comment, because I, I, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna reach back out to you. So uh, cheers, folks, from Kamada Joe. Have a great evening.